G'day guys, Cam from Battler again. How you doing? It's about five degrees out here at the moment. It's uh, it's coming on towards ten o'clock. And just come back from date night with my wife. We we, we do have uh, an hour and a half when the kids are while they're doing uh, some sort of sport or they're working, and we get an hour and a half to ourselves once a week. So we, we make sure we go out for dinner and spend some time together. Um, I want to talk about uh, capacities, capacities in your workshop. Um, a lot of us only have a fairly small workshop to work in. Uh, my workshop or my workshop area that I have here is probably uh, four meters by four meters square. So it's not huge. So I can only fit a certain amount or a certain size gear inside here. And that's okay if you want to do stuff that's uh, that's medium size on this lathe. It's a, it's a swing of about 330. And I can comfortably go down to, to smaller sizes. And uh, that was one of the reasons I got one of these D14 ER32 uh, conversion chucks. So it makes it nice and easy when you get small stock in there. You can machine it up and it feels a lot more comfortable rather than having a, you know, a large, uh, a large three jewel holding the gear. But sometimes we want to go bigger. And those very rare occasions that you do want to go bigger and you're really hamstrung by the capacity of your lathe. So I'll give you a couple of examples um, of what I've got here. I'll show you my face plates. So this is my small face plate. And here's uh, 250 millimeters across. Comfortable size. This one here is my medium sized face plate. And that's 320 across and it, it just clears the gap or just clears the ways quite comfortably. So that's my medium size one. And I'll show you my large face plate that I use. So I might disturb you a bit here. I'll, uh, I'll bring the camera back a bit. All right, I will bring this into, into shot for you. Just bear with me for a moment. I'll get something craned up. So, this here is my big face plate. Um, I actually fully turned this face plate on this particular lathe. So I did all the machining on this lathe. Um, I did all the milling. Oh, let's turn it around again. Over on the bridge port. And uh, as you can see by the pictures. So that's the back end of it. This is a face plate that, um, that I fabricated. Um, had it stress relieved and as I said fully machined it here in my workshop. So if you do want to go bigger you can do it and uh, I will show you the technique that I use to be able to machine this type of gear. Um, and look it can be it can be done on any lathe, this technique can be done on any lathe. And it was just that I was over at a good mate's place one day having a, a, a look at a, um, a diesel engine he made. And uh, he, he made it from from no working drawings, he, he set himself a task that he was going to do it completely mind to hand. Uh, he did running sketches along the way, but he had absolutely no formal drawings, and that was the task that he set himself. And it was a beautiful little job. And I was looking at the flywheels that was on that particular little little engine, and um, the flywheels were, were nine inches in diameter, and he had a little three and a half inch swing mifer that he was machining him on. So I asked him who machined them for him, or where did he go to get the machine? And uh, he said he did them on the MyFit. And uh, he showed me the technique that he used to increase the swing of his lathe. And uh, honestly, it was a three or four minute setup to do it. And uh, I thought, great, that's something I'm going to do because I wanted to machine up or manufacture a riser for my milling machine. And uh, I think the riser is about 400 millimeters in diameter. And as I said, this lathe only swings 330. So. Um, based on the concept that, uh, that John had, uh, I've come along and done the same thing. So that's my large face plate. And I 
got the same show with my uh, with my chucks as well. I've got a, a 200 mil diameter chuck. I've got a 350 mil diameter chuck, and I think my big chuck. I'll put it up here in a minute. I think the big chuck is about 550, just over half a meter in diameter. So um, we'll show you what that looks like. And we'll go from there. Whichever one's got to stand a four jaw. As I said, I've got a 350 millimeter diameter four jaw that I'll sit up here and I've got my bigger four jaw. And as I said, this one measures just over half a meter. Let's bring it up into shot for you. This one measures just over half a metre in diameter. And he sits on this lathe quite comfortably when we do this, uh, this, this little technique. Um, as a matter of fact, I use this particular four jaw, the two slots in the four jaw, to mount the faceplate to, so that I can machine the faceplate, and that worked out really well. Bit of a story on the four jaw: I, I had designed up a set of jaws, a bolt-on set of jaws onto that faceplate, um, because I couldn't find a, a chuck. It was half reasonably priced. They were, uh, you know, this diameter. You're looking well over a thousand dollars for something like this. So, I, as I said, I designed up a. Uh, a set of jaws to mount onto that faceplate, but um, I was over at one of the uh, contracting companies uh, that uh, did a lot of work for me and uh, mentioned to them that I was looking for a four jaw and uh, they said, listen, we've got one from a, from a machine that we got rid of, but the, um, the actual four jaw jams up, it, it doesn't work. And uh, uh, they said, look, you're quite happy to have it if you, you, know, you have it uh, no charge. So, um, was lying in a pool of water underneath some um, some pallets or some racking, and uh, I, uh, I got it home, and uh, the scroll screw had actually been chewed out. So I was able to build that up, and then uh, and then um, recut the thread on that, and uh, get the whole show back and going again. I had to do a little bit of cleaning up on these jaws too, because they were pretty uh, they were pretty rancid. So uh, I cleaned all those up, and it's come up uh, it's come up really nice. So that's the big four jaw that I use, and uh, yeah, it works very, very well. I, th I think I forgot to mention on that face plate too, that's, um, that's about 630 millimetres in diameter, I think, the, the face plate. So and this, one's, this one's just a tad over half a metre in diameter. So yeah, that's my big chuck. All right, we'll show you some of the gear that I've machined up, some of the oversized stuff that I've machined up. Uh, on this lathe, so we'll, uh, we'll go and grab that and, uh, and hook that up. Yeah, so this is the um, 
extender I made up for the uh, the Bridgeport turret mill to uh, lift the uh, the ram head up a little bit higher so I could get a little bit more capacity. I did two of these. Uh, this one here, I think, it was five inches, and the one I've got mounted on there at the moment is um, um, two inches, fifty millimeters. So I've, I've raised that head up another fifty millimeters. I think these are probably around about just shy of four hundred millimeters in diameter. So. This is one of the machine jobs I did in here. These were fairly expensive to go and buy. Um, you know, they were 900 bucks to a thousand dollars to buy these uh, these tow extenders. And um, you know, I had a one of my contractors uh, roll up the uh, the plate for me. The 20 yeah 20 millimeter plate, and um, I had some rims plasma cut and. Uh, Weld the whole show up and uh, and machine it in this lathe. So um, I'll, uh, the next video I'll show you some um, some photos of the setup of that being machined and and also um, the faceplate being machined. And uh, we'll show you how we go about um, modifying the, the lathe very simply to be able to machine those uh, those large diameters. So I might take you. I just uh, give you a quick flick at the. Uh, on the CAD there, the uh, the faceplate that um, I designed up uh, that you saw just before. So we'll have a look at that, and we'll call it a night because it's getting very very cold out here at the moment. Right. So you know, one of the great things is being able to put up a very small bridge crane inside the workshop here. It's um, it makes life so much easier. I've got some fairly heavy gear that I put on the table of the milling machine there. I've got a big, big dividing head, the rotary table. Um, a lot of gear I put up there is very heavy and, uh, and to have this uh, this little um, gantry crane that, uh, that I put up uh, a number of years ago um, certainly takes a, a load off, so to speak. I don't know how this is going to look, but um, let's have a go anyway. So, just did some, um, well, just did the concept layouts as to how it was going to work there. The jaws that I was talking about that I was going to bolt on as insert jaws uh, so that uh, I could use this as a, a four jaw chuck. But as I said, uh, one of my contractors uh, gave me a chuck that, uh, that was roached out. So I was able to do the repair work on that, so um, that, that, that worked out really well. So I didn't have to go on with that uh, with that insert arrangement. So just standard drawings, just the uh, front and back elevations and a, and a sectional arrangement there, just showing uh, all the machining details um, on that particular unit. Um, the DXF files that I created for the uh, for the laser cutting of. Um, the actual faceplate itself and uh, and all the backup rings and all the little gussets that uh, that went into the back of it. And right, now I've got the uh, insert ring, which I think for memory was a um, a, uh, a D16. So I had to match that taper up because uh, that was the same taper that had on the um, uh, on my 350 millimeter diameter four jaw, and uh, it's the same taper that the uh, that the big four jaw has got. So um, yeah, matched it up so and that, that insert just bolts on there quite simply so um, I'll show you some photos of the fabrication of this uh, at the end before we go on so once again I just throw my little concepts down all my ideas and then from that start to, uh, start to come up with uh, something that's going to work and we work on it from there so and uh, as you saw right there, it, um, it, uh, it came out quite well. So, Alright, I'll, uh, I'll flick up some photos of the fabrication on this. As I said, this particular faceplate one, so I, um, I uh, welded it up. Um, I, uh, I strapped it onto a large iron cross, if you like, and uh, one of my uh, contractors... Uh, was sending a fair bit of stuff out at the time for uh, for stress relieving, so um, he just packaged this one up as uh, as part of the job and uh, paid him a, a little bit uh, 
uh, thank you money for uh, for doing that for me and uh, yeah got a stress relief so um, next video we'll, we'll set that up I'd, I'd be interested to see because I haven't had this up for quite some time just to see matter of fact it's probably been a couple of years since I've had this up just to see how accurate it actually is if it's kept its accuracy or whether that's uh, it's creaked so um, yeah we'll uh, we'll do that all right I'll uh, I'll throw some uh, some photos up of uh, of this fabrication anyway and then uh, as I said the next uh, next YouTube video I do I'll I'll show you how we actually uh, actually go about doing this uh, the concept I use and as I said uh, it's very simple and uh, it can be applied to I reckon almost any lathe any lathe all right we'll see you soon